Guys, check this out. This is absolutely insanely cool. We have our pearl dragon here named Nova, but you know what? I'm about to change his name to Casanova because Lilith, his girlfriend, laid eggs. But the thing that really sucks is that this is her lay box right here, and it's nice moist moss in there where she should be laying her eggs. And by the way, it's way off season. She should be laying her eggs in the summertime, not in the wintertime. But she laid a bunch of eggs over here. The downside is, is the eggs look like they're dehydrated because, of course, she didn't lay them in moist box. So I'm kind of bummed. Is there a chance we could save them? Yes. But we're going to have to set up a nest box really quick. And this is actually hatch right. I oftentimes will incubate in a shoe box, but because they're dehydrated, I want to have a smaller and closure that I can have closed off with a higher humidity to hopefully bring them out. So let's go ahead and collect these eggs really quick. So it looks like we have one, and again, they are definitely what we would call desiccated or dehydrated. Now this one actually looks like it might be okay right here, but I'm gonna go ahead and just set these all down in this right here and hope for the best. I do have one other secret. Now this one right here, ooh, that doesn't have very much hope, I'm not gonna lie to you. If she would have laid in the nest box, we would have beautiful eggs, and there are five amazing eggs here, definitely pearly white definitely fertile. The good news is, is that once she laid her first clutch, they usually go into a cycle of three clutches. So in about six to eight weeks, hopefully she'll lay another clutch. And we're just going to have to pay a lot closer attention to what is going on in this enclosure. So the other trick is actually to put a little damp sphagnum on it. So this is actually sphagnum moss here. And so what I'm going to do is just going to dampen this up a little bit. Now you don't want it too wet because if it's too wet, the eggs will actually get wet. And that's something you don't want to have happen. So I'm going to wring out all the water I possibly can. Just get this nice and damp like that. And what I'm going to do is put a layer of the sphagnum right on top of these eggs right here. And because I'm using a smaller cup, again, that humidity is going to be 100% in here with that sphagnum moss and that hatch right that has a water isomer in it. Now, with any luck in the next week or so, these eggs will actually pop out and actually survive. My guess is, is that four out of five of them could potentially come back. The one is pretty bad. I'm not going to lie. These guys will typically take about 90 days to hatch. But the next week is what's important. So my guy Nova or Casanova is a daddy again. Again, this time let's hope we had some babies. So Brian missed an egg. It looks like a good one. It does. Grab it. Go grab it. Grab it. Yeah, it's still dehydrated, so I'm not gonna go find the eggs. Let me uh, just double check the egg box. Nothing in there. So, hey Brian, we got another one. Got another egg? Yeah. I missed one. It looks good. This one looks actually pretty good, right in there. Yeah, this one looks like I'm making. So, all right, make that uh, five out of six potential. One definitely a little desiccated. Baby Cresta geckos. Ooh. They're from this group here. I don't know which one's the mom. We've got two females in here and a male. We got Columbia, Riff Raff, and Magenta. We're gonna get these guys set up today. And these guys we set up a little different than gargoyle geckos. So these are the only animals pretty much that we'll set up together right away. I didn't used to do that, but I was talking to a lot of other crested gecko breeders and they seem to have better luck with them eating and everything if you set them up with another one. It makes them feel like they have to compete for food so it'll make them eat a little bit more. And I've noticed that, yeah, they do tend to like grow a bit faster if you set them up initially maybe a month two months together got a little moss cup in here just to keep humidity up a little bit we're setting them up on paper towel I've got some little hot little places for them to hide since we got two of them in here we don't want them to nip each other or anything got two little food cups I'm gonna fill up here and a water cup and this is Pangea crested gecko diet So we'll keep them together for about a month and then I'll separate them and they'll be on their own. Lori wants you. Oh crap. It's never a good thing to hear, huh? Not at 9.45 in the morning. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Up, 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 up. Here you go, buddy. There you go. Of course, this is Billy the Frilly. Now, there's two different types of frill dragons. There's actually the Indonesian New Guinea ones, like Nova and Lilith. And then there's actually Billy the Frilly, which comes from Australia. <laughs> he is absolutely amazing. And the Australian frillies are much more rare, obviously. We only have one of these guys. But Billy the Frilly is absolutely amazing. And a lot of people think that bearded dragons are actually the same to animal as frill dragons. They can come from the same era. Obviously, bearded dragons are from Australia, and so are frill dragons. But again, most of the ones are from Indonesia and New Guinea from this country. But the fact is, is they're actually very different animals. And Betty White is definitely pretty hungry today. Come on, bud. There you go. One more. What a little super monster she is. Hey, Mike. Yes. I got something I need to take care of. There's something outside the front door that I need you to clean up for me. I keep that glove on too. Yeah, I definitely keep the glove on. What's outside the front door? Uh, it's right outside the front door in the planter. You can't miss it. Uh, that that door? Yeah, you got this. Oh, no. <laughs> 
This is actually Nova and Lilith's baby from the couple years ago that is getting big, and they're really amazing. Of course, these are arboreal, unlike the bearded dragons, which basically just means they like to be up in the trees. You can see he's hanging on to me like I'm a tree branch, right? And they have these frills right here, which is their defense mechanism, which is pretty cool. The fact is they actually hardly ever frill up because they trust us and they're not afraid of us. So Chicken Nugget only frills up when he sees Elvis, the monitor lizard. I'll show you that in a minute. It is pretty cool. These guys also need a higher humidity than bearded dragons, so they're not kind of like a desert dwelling kind of savanna dwelling animal. They're actually more of a rainforest animal, so they definitely need a higher humidity. But when this guy frills up, it's pretty cool. And I'll show you that here in a minute. Whereas bearded dragons are actually what they call omnivores, which means that they eat fruits and vegetables and they eat some bugs. So they're not exclusively bug eaters, although they do like their bugs, there's no doubt about it, right, Flaming Hot? And you can see Elvis is coming down right now. Watch what happens with this guy when he gets close to Elvis. See? Immediate threat display. That is what a frilled dragon actually does right here when he sees something like a monitor lizard. Because in the wild, you gotta remember in Indonesia, a monitor lizard like this is gonna potentially eat something like chicken nugget here, and that's what happens. That's the threat display. That's absolutely incredible, isn't it? I mean, how cool. Again, now he feels a little bit comfortable. As he gets closer to Elvis again, bam! Threat display comes back up, right? His mouth is open, that frill's coming up, makes him look bigger. That is an absolutely amazing thing to see. There's no doubt about that. Coming back at you with my friends over at HelloFresh. Today, we are about to make some scrumptious food. This is actually balsamic tomato and herb chicken. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be absolutely incredible. And you know my friends over at HelloFresh are always amazing. You know, Valentine's Day is coming up. What says love more than eating at home with your loved one? You know, restaurants are tough. You know, you go out, it takes time, they're crowded, it's packed. You can make something amazing right now and actually stay home and show your loved one how much you love them. And with shared starters, scrumptious size, and decadent desserts, it's definitely going to show your loved one who you actually love. And I don't know about you, but it's time to keep those New Year's resolutions going and keep your health going on. And with HelloFresh, you can do just that. HelloFresh offers so many recipes to break you out of your recipe rut. And if you're busy like I am, they have an amazing amount of quick and easy meals that can take less than 20 minutes. So if you don't have the time, not to mention all their meals come in recycled content, which is great for the environment. Not to mention pre-portioned meals means there's gonna be less waste, which is good for the environment. What do you say we just jump in and make some beautiful chicken? Getting home-cooked meals on the table every day is an accomplishment worth celebrating. Let HelloFresh help with 50 weekly menu and market items to choose some so that you can think less about what's for dinner and more about achieving your goals. With fit and wholesome recipes, low in calories and carbs, you can indulge in delicious meals without the worries. HelloFresh makes eating well easier with family-friendly, fit and wholesome, Presbyterian, and veggie options every week. Increase your HelloFresh box serving so that you can easily use leftover for lunches. Go to HelloFresh.com, use the promo code BRIANB16 for up to 16 free meals and 3 surprise gifts. And now the moment of truth. That is amazing. Now you can go to HelloFresh.com, use my promo code BRIANB16 for up to 16 free meals plus three surprise gifts. Yeah, I'm joking. <laughs> What's that? Is that a dirty diaper? Dude, is it clean at least? No, I don't think so, dude. <laughs> Mickey Mouse. Why is it? Who brings? Listen, if you're gonna change your kid at the raptorium, do it in the bathroom, would you? Please? Oh my god, I got the glove on. Oh no. <laughs> Beth, there's a dirty diaper. It's Mickey Mouse. I think it's clean. Cleaner than it was. So with any luck, Nova will be a daddy again. It's been a little while since we've hatched out baby frillies. And like I said, this is completely off season. They typically lay their eggs in June, July. Why they're laying them in the middle of winter, I have no idea. But uh, I absolutely think it's amazing. And hey, I wish I would have caught those eggs earlier or she would have laid them in the nest box like she should have. But we're going to keep a closer eye on her in about five or six weeks when she could potentially lay again. And we'll let you know how those eggs go. Because like I said, it's about a 50-50 chance. I think about five of those eggs. What are you doing, buddy? About five of those eggs are actually possible possible to hatch. One definitely looks bad, but they could all go bad. I don't know what's going to happen, but Nova, you are such a silly monkey. I love you, little buddy. So with any luck, we'll have some little baby frillies here in just a few months. Wasn't it out in the planner? Yeah, you want yeah. it? No. Be sure. No, For Christmas. Sure. <laughs> Why would you throw that in the planner? Let me throw it in this trash. We're always trying to find really interesting places that are near the zoo so that when you come to visit us, you want to see something else we can send you and say, go check this out. So a cool place opened up down the street. We're going to visit. Oh my gosh! 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 Oh my
Look at all these toys. I mean, oh my gosh. I, you know, I knew this place was cool from the outside. It looked really dope, but inside it is so much cooler. Oh my goodness. So look at this. Noah, what's your favorite? There you go. That's your guy right there. Oh, Steve Crikey. Oh my gosh, you gotta be kidding me right now. Lori! Lori, can I get the, oh my God. This is dope, isn't it? I think he talks. Does he talk, Crikey? Yeah, I don't know how. Does he say Crikey? Oh God, don't tell her. He found it on his own. Crikey! Does he have a pull string or something? No, you're not getting it. Wait, listen, listen. This is gonna be great. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh, another one. Oh, can't so remember, it. remember the decluttering? No, but this is different. This no, is it's Steve. not. This is Steve, I'm getting it. Can I please? That one's no, only please. 40 up. I gotta talk her into letting me get this. I should get this too. Dog, dude. Can I jump on this? Can I ride this? So this is cool. Again, another place that you can come to when you come to the Reptarium. Come here and check this place out. This is, uh, I could spend hours in this place. It's it insane. So, it's it so, cool. so cool. I mean, you know, it's funny because it's like a lot of stuff I grew up seeing that yeah. you don't see anymore yeah. at all. Same with obviously all you guys. So I love this. this spork. Switchblade sporks. That's a hard one. Switchblade spork. I used to have this. I used to have that too. The little switchblade yeah, yeah. comb. That's awesome. <laughs> you should do this to Mike. That's a prank. We gotta, we gotta do that to Mike. Wait, just wait, add, wait, just, wait a just, second. Just, just add water. Look at all these awesome lunch boxes. <laughs> Night Rider. Did you have one? I had a Scooby-Doo one. Okay, I had Holly Hobby. I had Scooby-Doo and it was bad. I loved my Scooby-Doo. Look at the A-Team. Oh what? God, that one's all <laughs> Steve Austin. Oh, that's a fall guy. That's a $6 million man. $120. Why does he got the fall guy? I know, Jeez. they're, See, they're the expensive. Oh my gosh. That's scary. Dude. Oh my gosh. Let's just get the Steve Irwin doll and let's get out of here. Okay, let's just get out of here. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, do you remember those? Oh my gosh, I do remember My these. grandma had these. Oh like, my gosh, that and is that, so yep, cool. You would just do and then she would do whatever you were eating and then you'd sit in front of a TV with it on your lap like this. Oh my so god, <laughs> that is cool. There's some cool stuff in here. There's so many cool GI Joes too. This place is so much cooler than I thought it was gonna be. Oh, I always wanted one of these when I was a kid. The car? Yeah, the police car with the actual siren on top. Noise? But we were too poor. All right, I'm coming here a lot. I'm buying a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff, Lori. Lots of stuff. And I'm going to be coming and selling it back. Oh, <laughs> look at this dude, man. Oh, my God, this is dope. Metallica, Ozzy Osbourne. Oh, my God. Oh, look at this is cool. She's Albert Einstein. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's freaking. That's hilarious. Look the Bigfoot with the Fruit La Luma underwear. Work is hard. Oh. Those are cool mushrooms. Man. So with any luck, we'll have some baby frillies here later on. If you enjoyed this video and you enjoy eggs or something like that, here's a playlist with a bunch of egg videos that you can watch. On this side, do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button. It would mean the world to me. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you in the next one.